G'day everyone and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. My name is Mark and I'm a Kiwi rugby fan living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And in today's video I'm going to be looking at the round three game of the Six Nations competition this year that took place in Lille in France over the weekend and that was between the home country France and the visitors Italy. So welcome to my channel. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. It's great to have you here, of course. And if you're a first timer here, welcome. And don't forget, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does me a great lot of good. And uh, make sure you stick around. We're building a fantastic global rugby community here. And we're sharing everything that's going on in the world of rugby. And I really appreciate your opinion. So after you've watched this video through its entirety, make sure you drop your comment below because I read them all. Now getting into this game, it was going to be a fascinating encounter. The last time these two teams met was in the Rugby World Cup last year. France won that game by 60 points to 7. And uh, we're all wondering what was going to happen this year because both teams haven't been playing that well in the Six Nations. Of course, Italy under their new head coach, Gonzalo Quesada, uh, looking at creating a new era for Italian rugby after Kieran Crowley was given the sack after the Rugby World Cup. Now, we're looking at France, who are under Fabien Galtier, and of course, they're missing Anton Dupont this year, and everybody's saying that that's making a huge difference to this French team. I'm one of those people that's saying that, and it was going to be interesting to see how they go against Italy. On a head-to-head -head basis, 14-0 to France against Italy. And Italy were trying to get something from this game after their performance against Ireland, which was 36 points to nil in their last outing in Dublin. The referee for the game was Christoph Ridley, and uh, he would play a major part in this game, as referees tend to do these days. So the game got underway, and for the first couple of minutes, it was all Italy. They looked like they had shown up for this game. They were putting on a number of attacks, and I was pretty impressed with what I saw in that first three minutes, because Italy looked to play the expansive game and they found a couple of holes in the French defence. But unfortunately for Italy, France came straight back at them and in the sixth minute after a raid towards the Italian line, it was the French captain of the day, Charles Olivon, that went over for a great try. And uh, France were on the board after just six minutes. Thomas Ramos, the French fullback, got the conversion over. And before we knew it, it was seven points to nil after just seven minutes. Now, was this an indication of what was going to happen in this game? Were France going to kick on and score a lot of points? Well, we'd find out soon enough. Over the next couple of minutes of the game, it was all France again, and they got a fantastic 60-metre break in the 11th minute of the game that took them down very close to the Italian line. They were unlucky not to score on that occasion. And then we saw the first scrums of the game and it was all France. They were extremely dominant in the, in the scrum. And in the 12th minute, they actually got a penalty from the scrum. Thomas Ramos came up and kicked that penalty over, which took France out to a 10 point to nil lead after just 12 minutes of the game. And then the game started to open up and Italy went down close towards the French line and they were on attack looking pretty good. But unfortunately, they got penalised for not releasing the ball. So it gave France an opportunity to clear the ball on that particular stage. Then two minutes later in the 18th minute of the game, that big, massive prop for France, Antonio, got the ball and steamrolled his way in a fantastic break. And he was brought down by Italy's number 10, Gabisi. And it was one of two runs that we would see in quick succession from big props in this game. It was starting to open up. At this stage of the game, it was all France in terms of possession, and they went back down onto attack again. They got a penalty. They kicked for touch to give themselves a 10-meter line-out. And uh, odds on were that uh, the French forwards were going to be able to do a pick and go and get close to the line. But as we started to see from France, they really weren't executing their ball skills very well, and the ball was eventually turned over, and Italy were able to clear the ball from their line. By the time we got to the 20 minute mark of the game, the Italians had already lost two of their own scrums and the French pack looked very, very dominant. Tuolagi was one of the ones making a big difference and him and Antonio were putting on huge amounts of pressure in the scrummage time. 
A couple of minutes later, around the 22 minute mark, France went back onto the attack again. The ball came out to Jalibert. He had a fantastic opportunity. But what did he do? He kicked the ball out into touch. By the time we got to this stage of the game, which was approaching the 30 minute mark, it started to make me feel that France were pointless with their attack. They didn't know what they were like. I actually wrote down that they were like chickens without heads, just running around and needlessly not able to penetrate. And one of the things that stuck out for me was the combination between nine and 10 for France, Luku and Jalibert. Luku for me has a very poor passing technique. He delays the pass gives the defence that extra split second they need to get up into the faces of the inside backs. And Jalabert in the last couple of games has just looked out of place for France. I do rate this guy. I think he's a talented footballer, but we haven't seen it. And maybe it's because he hasn't got Anton Dupont inside him. That may be a factor that's happening to Jalabert. But he started off this game pretty poorly. He made a couple of bad decisions. And as I just mentioned, he kicked the ball out on the full while France were on the attack and the ball should have gone through hand and given their outside backs a greater opportunity to score. I made a note uh, about Jalibert actually up until that 30 minute mark, he'd actually cost France three potential tries from poor decisions that he had made. That's a lot of points to leave on the table and you can see why this French team is not as calculating as they were at the Rugby World Cup last year. A lot of people have been making comments on my videos about that something that's missing from France this year. They just don't seem to be the team that they were last year and I can't disagree with that at all. 32nd minute of the game, the Italians won a scrum penalty, their first in this match. And there was a lot of high fives from the Italian pack on that one. But then we saw another French opportunity in the 34th minute. The ball came out to Damien Pinot on the right wing. He wanted to do a chip over the top, regain the ball and score a try, which he seems to do as easy as he does when he's having breakfast. But on this occasion, he just kicked the ball out on the full and the whole opportunity went missing for France. And that was just another example of what's happening to this French team at the moment. Their execution on things that they were doing quite well last year, it's just not happening for them in the Six Nations competition. By the time we got to the 38th minute mark of the first half, France had got 81% of the position, but they were only ahead by 10 points to nil on the scoreboard. And I'm sure Fabian Gaultier was looking forward to his halftime chat with the guys to say, guys, you've got to be more precise in this game. You've got to go in there and execute these opportunities because they just weren't doing it. A minute or so later, Jalabert actually left the field injured and Mo Farna came on to replace him. I thought that was a good thing for France because Jalabert was having a shocking game and they needed somebody to do something a little bit different in that 10 position. And then in the last couple of minutes of the first half, it was all Italy. They got on to attack through a penalty kick. Then they started putting phase after phase together, attacking the French line and they looked very, very good indeed. Two things then ended up happening. Italy got a penalty and Paige Riello, their halfback, was able to slot that over to make the score 10-3. And as a result of the infringement, we saw a yellow card to Jonathan Dante for France, who's another one of those players who I think hasn't been playing up to his potential so far in this French team in the Six Nations competition. So he got to have a seat for 10 minutes and we went to half time at 10 points to three. And uh, France would have been very, very annoyed with this after having all that possession in the first half, bombing a lot of try opportunities through that man, Jalabert, who was now sitting on the sideline after being replaced, and Italy crawling back three points at half time there to go down only seven points going into the shed. I think Gonzalo Quesada would have said to the guys they needed to up their game. They weren't looking very good. Italy, they weren't getting the ball. They weren't intense enough in the breakdowns and competing for the ball at that level. That's where France were winning the ball. But then when France were getting the ball, they were a bit like England in this game and they didn't know what to do with it with their outside backs. So my summary of the first half, poor game by both teams, both making a lots of errors and not looking intense enough to take it to the opposition. France probably looked the worst than Italy because they had all that possession and they didn't know what to do with it, basically. So I was looking forward to the second half just from the perspective that maybe this game was going to improve and that we were going to see a bit of an, an intense battle. The, sec the second half got underway and immediately in the second half we saw Italy's discipline fall off. Ruza, their lock, made an idiotic mistake by coming through them all, putting his hands on the ball. He knew he was offside and there was a penalty immediately to the French team. So in the 43rd minute, Thomas Ramos got another penalty. 
France went ahead by 13 points to 3 with just 36 minutes of the game to go. Then in the 47th minute of the game it was Italy going on to a rear attacking opportunity and Caputo put a great kick through. One of their uh, backs, I think it was Brex or Menoncello, was chasing the ball. Unfortunately, it went dead in goal before he was able to get to it and score a potential try. But it was a good attacking raid by Italy. They showed a little bit of innovation. And uh, in one of the rare moments that they actually got the ball close to the French line, they did their very best to score a try. Then for the game, then for the next five minutes of this game, it went into a very scrappy affair where both teams were making lots of different errors. The, the referee was trying to get us to have a flowing open game, but uh, drop passes, silly kicks. So both teams really letting themselves down during that period of the game and uh, making lots of lots of errors. Italy got close down towards the French line again. They were awarded a penalty from the referee Christophe Ridley and Gabisi came up to slot that between the posts. So the score came back to 13 points to six. And as bad as France were playing on this particular day, I thought Italy had an opportunity, if they got a little bit of ball, to get back into this game and to put some pressure on France. So we had 20 minutes left in the game, 13 points to six. Could Italy actually do it? Because that successful penalty attempt by Gabisi gave the Italians a little bit of self-belief. And for the next five minutes, they went on to the attack and started putting more and more pressure onto France's defense. And we saw a lot of the defense opportunities start to creak open for Italy in the back end of this game. But then in the 69th minute, we saw Italy going on to the attack again, phase after phase. And then we saw a wonderful try by Caputo, who got through the gap and scored the try. That got the score back to 13 points to 11 with a kick to come. Gabisi was actually successful. And we had a tied game, 13 points all, with 11 minutes left in this game. This was going to be a nail-biter right to the end. And you could see shots of Fabian Gaultier sitting in the French box, shaking his head, just not understanding what's going on with this French team. And if he doesn't know what's going on with this French team, then who does? They're definitely not playing very good rugby at the moment. But credit to Italy, they took their opportunity. They got on to attack down into the French 22 and they scored a great try to bring this game back to level with just 10 minutes, as I said, left in the game. We're seeing a lot of drama in this year's Six Nations competition. In the last five minutes of most games, there's always something going on that's either controversial or giving us a great thrill. And that was about to happen in this game. In the 76th minute, we saw France on attack again down into the Italian 22. They're putting a lot of pressure on Italy. I thought they were going to get over to score the match-winning try in this situation, but they didn't, and credit to Italy, they came up with some great defensive play. As the game ticked over the 80-minute mark, we saw Italy on attack down into the French territory. They were playing really well, putting a lot of pressure on France. France got penalised for not releasing the ball. There was a penalty kick within kicking range for Gabisi, and he was about to line the ball up with an opportunity to win this game for Italy, their first in the Six Nations competition this year, and their first opportunity to beat France in the Six Nations as well. Now, we saw something fairly dramatic unfold as Gabisi was taking the kick. The ball fell off the tee. The clock for the, uh, the penalty attempt kept ticking down. It looked like that some French players had charged the penalty opportunity. If that was the case, the law states that the penalty should be retaken and Italy would have been marched 10 metres closer to the goalpost. That didn't happen. Christophe Ridley let the thing play out. Gabisi quickly put the ball back on the tee, took a rushed kick at goal because he only had eight seconds left on the clock by the time he placed the ball. And unfortunately, the ball hit the right-hand post and deflected off. France got the ball and cleared it away. And that was the end of the game. So a dramatic end to this particular game. Gabisi stood in the middle of the field with his head on his hands in disbelief that the ball had actually hit the goalpost. An opportunity for Italy got away on that occasion. OK, looking for standout players in this particular game. From the French side, I thought Antonio had a pretty good game. Tuolagi did as well until he got replaced. I thought the French forwards went well for different periods of this game. But again, they got all that possession and the French backs weren't doing anything with it. 
Ramos, for me, was the standout within the French backline this weekend. He was good under the high ball. He was good with his kicking, but he didn't have any support from his other players. And after Dante went off, they looked really, really misplaced. Mofana didn't really inject himself into the game too much at all. And Jalabert and Luku were missing in action as far as quality goes in this particular game. For Italy, on their side, their defence was good. We saw Caputo do a couple of really good things uh, and making a couple of breaks. We saw Ioni again. I really like this guy. As I said, he's a bit like Duhan van der He goes looking for the ball. He gets hungry. He's a good player for Italy. He's just not seeing enough ball, and that's because Italy are not getting enough possession. I've watched the Lock Russo over the last few games. He's done some stupid things. He has brain fades during games, costing Italy points. Again, today he cost Italy a penalty, which led to points. He did it again in their last game against Ireland. He's got to get his discipline under control, or maybe Gonzalo Quesada needs to look at replacing him. He's just not showing the level of discipline required in this Italian team. They've got issues in the forwards. I thought the French forwards dominated them in this game, both in lineouts and in the scrum, so Italy have an issue there. And they also have an issue around the halfback position. I don't think Paige Riello or Varney are quick enough to really be able to get the ball out. I've had problems with Gabisi in the past. He kicked well today. General play wasn't so good. I'm still not a fan of his, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and let's see how he goes in the last two games for Italy. They missed Tommaso Allen. He needs to be back in this team. He's a big player for Italy. And uh, let's hope he's there for their last two games. Overall, we didn't see too much from Brex or Men and Cello in this game. They were fairly quiet. They are good players. But again, I think this came down to a lot of the fact that Italy were just not getting the ball. So let me know in the comments who you thought were standout players from both the French team and the Italian team in this game. I'd like to know what you thought. The final score in this game between France and Italy played in Lille in the weekend was 13 points all. And uh, at the end of the game, I sat there and I just thought, well, that was a shocking game from both teams. There was a lot of errors. This French team had a lot of ball. They didn't know what to do with it. They don't seem to have anybody in their back line at the moment that's able to make some creative play. We did see a period of about 10 minutes towards the end of the game where Thomas Ramos made a couple of good runs. It was looking like he was putting his hand up and saying, OK, guys, if you're not going to do it in the main back line, I'm going to come in from fullback and do a couple of runs. He did a couple of good interjections, but it didn't lead to any additional points for France. Outside of that, we didn't see anything from these French backs. Dante's yellow card got upgraded to a red card, so France were down to 14 men in the end. It didn't seem to make any difference in terms of the amount of position they were getting in the game. I think uh, Gonzalo Cuisado also would have been really disappointed with Italy. Not only didn't they win the game in the end when they had the opportunity, but based on some of their defensive work that they were doing against this French team, it didn't convert into position enough for them to move forward and score points against France. One thing I will say about Italy, when they did get the opportunity to get down into the French 22, they did score a couple of points and that was rewarding for them, I guess. But at the end of the day, this was two very poor teams of playing rugby in this particular game, I thought. And when you compare the level of play to what we're seeing from Ireland at the moment, there's a huge gap in the intensity and the precision of these other teams versus what Ireland's being able to produce week in, week out. I don't now, there's a lot of people that are calling for Fabien Galtier to resign as the head coach of France. You'll remember that he took over the coaching role in 2020. He's lost five games, or France has lost five games since he's been in charge at head coach. Two of those leading up to the Rugby World Cup. And then, of course, they had that uh, loss in the Rugby World Cup to South Africa in the quarterfinals. Since then, they've lost to Ireland in this year's Six Nation, and now they've had a draw against Italy. So that's Fabien Gaultier's track record. So let me know in the comments if you think France need to uh, sack Gaultier. The, uh, the chairman of France Rugby has come out in the last couple of days and said that Gaultier is not going to be fired, that uh, his tenure through 2027 is assured, and he just needs some time to rebuild this French team. Now, we've got to remember there's a lot of players that went to the Rugby World Cup uh, still in this team, so it's not a case, in my eyes, of rebuilding this French team. It's about getting them to play better rugby, and that's what it appears to be about for Fabien Gaultier. Gonzalo Quesada, he's on a bit of a mission with Italy, isn't he? He's had a little bit of misfortune in this <laughs> Six Nations competition. That game against England was a lot closer than what some people have said. They got absolutely thrashed by Ireland, but that's no mean feat in these days because Ireland's beating everybody like that. 
And this game against France, well, they had an opportunity in that last minute to win this particular game and they could have come away with a very courageous win. So it's going to be interesting to see what Italian team turns up next time in their remaining two games. So as I said, Jonathan Dante's got a red card from this game. He's going to miss the rest of the Six Nations. So France are going to be made to make a change at number 12. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do there. Maybe they'll bring Mo Fana into that back line. But again, I'm super unimpressed with the French back line. Luku and Jalabert are not doing the game for me at the moment. They need BL, BRE on the wing as well. He's a game changer. We've already seen that in the Six Nations. And we'll have to see what team they roll out in two weeks' time. Italy have got Wales and Scotland to go in this year's competition. Going to be very interesting to see what happens there with both Wales and Scotland wanting to win their last two games. I think this Italian team might be ready to create an upset. Let me know what you think in the comments. Looking forward to all your thoughts around this game between France and Italy. It was a nail biter in the end. It wasn't good quality throughout the game. Lots of mistakes from both teams. And I just wonder where they both go from here. I'd like to hear what you think on that one. Okay, I'm going to be back again soon with some more content here on Inside Rugby. Don't forget, if you like this video and you want to follow along the journey, the best way to do it is hit that subscribe button, give this video a bit of a thumbs up, and I'll be back again really soon as we get ready in two weeks' time for the last two rounds of the Six Nations competition. But there's plenty more rugby coming here on Inside Rugby. Going to be looking at the Super Rugby Pacific competition and a lot of other things that are going on in World Rugby. So don't make sure you don't miss any of that. It's time for me to say adios from beautiful Mexico. I'll see you all again soon. Until then, bye for now.